This is Greg Gust at the National Weather Service. This is our homepage for the National Weather Service in Grand Forks. So weather.gov gets us into the page, weather.gov slash FGF uh, brings you into our local page. And you can see the hydrologic outlook in the background, light green, with some of the various flood warning products highlighted on there for the southern part of the basin. And I would just like to point out up at the top, the headline says flood briefing page. And if you would click on there, uh, some of the material that's going on, um, both our local forecast discussion or any hazardous weather outlook directly on there, as well as it's a direct link, of course, to the river conditions page, our what we call our AHPS, Advanced Hydrologic Prediction Services, but all the gauges indicated on there. And then just some of the immediate day one, day two, day three type stuff for weather and precipitation, temperature, maximum minimum temperatures, some of the soil condition reporting that's out there as well. So this is just uh, a one way to get to that uh, material that might be pertinent, especially over the next day or two, and keep updated with uh, what we have going for the river itself. This I'm going to pick on a few points here. So here's when I put right hover right above that gauge, you'll see the conditions on the 12-mile creek above Wheaton. So that's showing uh, down in Traverse County where water has been rising over the last few days and now it's kind of flattened out right in the lower mo edge of the minor flood stages there at Wheaton. These diamonds are gauge locations and the circles are actual where forecasts are produced for any of these points in there. But here, so again, 12 Mile Creek, uh, here's the Mustinka River coming into Wheaton. And there you can see as well into minor flood stage, most of that water flowing into Lake Traverse itself. Uh, here, I'm just going to pick on the Rabbit River near Campbell, and you can see where that water has come in and is now uh, spiked up a bit and is turning over, as we call it, where that first inflow has come in and, and it's moving down river toward the Bois de Sioux River. Uh, I'm going to hop out of here for a second and just go to some background information on this all again. So looking at this climate graph that we have uh, for the Fargo-Moorhead area, you can see that from January until this end of March period, our overall snowfall rising somewhat above the normal graph for this time of the year, as well as the overall precipitation in liquid equivalent, if you will, uh, coming in at that. Our temperature regime through much of February and March was, was well below normal, and now we are just tracking near that, that green area indicates the high and low temperature normalish range for this time of the year. Uh, very soon as we get into early April, our low temperature, uh, about the 8th or 9th of April, starts to be above freezing in Fargo. Well, we're not near that yet, but we're tracking toward that time period and not too far off of the normal temperature regime right now for this time of the year. Here's the actual soil temperature showing up on the Endon station located in Fargo. And the way to read this is the very bottom numbers here are blue. That's actually the, the surface, or near the surface, five centimeters down. Um, and so that light blue color that's showing up uh, in the lower left-hand part of that graphic just shows that it was well below freezing through the early part of March. And all those temperatures at different levels have been warming, warming steadily. So now blue, light blue tracks now just under the freezing point, slightly above during the day, slightly below, slightly above, slightly below. And then you can see the different colors throughout the depth of the soil, how they have steadily been tracking up uh, to near the freezing point. So we see that we're steadily drawing, uh, raising that freezing level. It's still frozen ground through through uh, uh, depth of the soil there, but it's very near freezing in most locations. And then south of Fargo, you would see a similar track. And in some locations, you might see where that soil temperature is at or even above freezing. That should, with the temperature regime coming up this weekend, again, cool down and, and drop any of those near surface temperatures down below freezing for a bit. Uh, but this has been going on now for the last couple of days. This is from two days ago, and this was an aerial flight thanks to the uh, Wilkin County for providing this to us. But this is uh, near Highway 210 between Breckenridge and, and Fergus Falls, showing just some of the overland flooding and water that was pooling up two days ago, moving against roadways, moving across the fields, and starting to bunch up 
as overland flooding starts to develop from that snow melt. And then here's along the Otter Tail River itself, east southeast of Breckenridge, and just showing that at that time, the river still had quite a bit of ice in it. It was flowing in through there and pu pulling in that water, but still a lot of ice on the river. Now that's two days ago. Um, and here the Rabbit River near Campbell, again, where it was just starting to open up, but there was still a lot of ice in the channel, still a lot of snow and ice uh, moving off the landscape at that point. Now, this is from yesterday, and this is the uh, county road just east of Campbell showing water breaking across some of those roads now. Again, temperatures staying above freezing overnight, water bunching up more and starting to move over some of these roads. So you have road closures there. Uh, this is out in eastern Ottertail County near Henning. So just to point out that as these are materializing, road closures out there, and we do want uh, folks to remember to not drive through areas where this is occurring because you don't know what the road conditions are underneath and try to get around there if at all possible and avoid going through those areas. So you'll see those marking flags showing up in and around the area. Do please heed those. This is satellite imagery from this morning, and here are, these are accentuated or, or colorized to try and point out some things. There's clouds up in the north, clouds up in the south, but here in the south basin, Grant, Wilkin, uh, Clay County, down into Traverse, you can see some of the darkening that is both uh, warmer and snow-free in most cases, ground either with black soil or with water on top, just another uh, nearly visible image trying to show some of that um, open ground throughout Traverse County, Western Grant County, into Wilkin County, a little bit showing up into Richland County as well, where again there's black soil and um, water moving across the landscape in a lot of those areas. And here, uh, this is back to those gauge stations and some of those gauges I was showing you already, uh, the Mustinka, the Campbell, the Rabbit River at Campbell. Uh, here's the Otter Tail River now showing up at the Breckenridge Diversion. So that's just off to the east side of Breckenridge and water that is moving around Breckenridge and coming into the Red River just north of town, while water that's coming up the Boy to Sioux and picking up some of that overland flow. Uh, here coming into Wapaton, you can see where that first initial crest from that local runoff and some of that flow that's coming uh, through the Boy de Sioux and, the, and in the Otter Tail and that drainage in there is, is coming into an initial crest here in Wapaton that will come through the course of today and into tomorrow. And then that should start to decrease again. As colder temperatures come in this weekend, the local runoff and flow will, will lock back up a bit. And then we expect that to start opening up and flowing again. So this is just an initial crest. It's not the final crest. Uh, we're not sure if this is the peak yet, the highest one of the spring runoff yet, but this is the initial one coming into Wapaton. So here's what's going on on the North Dakota side of the river. Now, if you remember from the satellite imagery, over on Richland County, you saw a lot more white uh, in general on the North Dakota side, a lot of more snow cover. So the wild rice coming into Matador just starting to open up there a little bit, but not very quickly. Uh, still a lot of ice and snow into that channel. And moving downstream from there, um, well, this is the Antelope Creek at Dwight in central part of Richland County. And that's just opening up a little, but not much motion on there yet. Um, and here's as that Wild Rice River starts to collect at Abercrombie, well, again, not much flow coming in there yet. Still a lot of ice, still a lot of snow, so not underway near as much. So there's much more initial action on the Minnesota side, down in Wilkin, Grant, Traverse County, even into Clay County, where water is moving, much less on the North Dakota side, Richland and Cass County at this time. Uh, here, as that comes into the Red River near Hickson, again, just to look at the map, you can see all these points in here and gauges. Hickson, just to the south of Fargo there, and that's where we have the initial wave of that action coming through Wapton, coming through those channels, uh, coming just in under 28 feet uh, into Hickson here, and that's Tuesday morning of next week, and then dropping off a little bit and holding as the next warm-up cycle comes into play. And then likewise coming into Fargo, now it's coming up, but it's, it doesn't have much flow yet 
uh, coming on the wild rice. So it comes in into about 23, 23 and a half feet or so, and then kind of parks there waiting. So next Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, we'll have another warm-up cycle in there. We'll start to get some more water moving, and we'll see where that goes from now. But but this is just, again, dealing with that initial runoff surge, uh, mainly what is coming in out of the uh, southeast part of the basin uh, and some of the local runoff in that area. But it is not the complete melt yet from the snow or uh, certainly not from the uh, North Dakota tributaries coming in. Back to here for a minute just to look at some of those tributaries. So again, looking at the, che the Cheyenne River near Lisbon, you see some ramp up coming in through there. But again, there's still plenty of snow melt coming and flow coming. So that's just some initial flow. Um, there's been a little bump that came through at Kindred, but then it'll start picking up more uh, here as the water from Lisbon comes in. But that is just initial runoff. That's not yet the main flow coming through that channel. Uh, we don't ha yet have the gauge active at Sabin, but we did. we're out there checking. There's still some ice to come off there, and water is coming up a bit. Um, on the Buffalo River near Holly, the north branch of the Buffalo, Let's see if that comes in better. Here we go. Let's you can see that that ramped up a little bit on there and now is tapering off again. So so that's there. It's coming up a little bit, but a lot more snow yet to come off on, on those Minnesota and North Dakota tributaries. So this just shows that through the next five days, there's little bits of moisture that are coming through. Again, that hundredth of an inch, tenth of an inch type of precipitation that could come through. There's a little bit of snow even possible here in the north end of the valley here uh, today into tomorrow. Later into that, day six and seven, down the road, there's a little more risk for a little more substantial precipitation coming into the area, some of that affecting the northern plains. So we'll be watching to see whether that heavier amount of precipitation is going to be anywhere near uh, affecting the Red River Basin. We could easily have a quarter of an inch or a half an inch or more of precipitation uh, late next week that comes in and around the area. And that's just a, a quick loop looking at activity moving across our south. This is the next couple of days. So pretty much cool air coming in behind a cold front here today that's going to cool us down, and then a reinforcing shot of cool air. So, so generally cool conditions, uh, highs barely above freezing most of the time, and lows well below freezing uh, here this weekend. But then we're going to start warming up early part of next week. Not a dramatic warm-up, uh, similar again to what we've been seeing the last week or two. Other locations around the basin are going to show some motion, some activity. You're not seeing much in any part of the northern part of the basin, um, just little bits as as most of that is still well frozen, um, and there's just a little bit of local inflow with some of the, the warming that's been occurring, but nothing yet substantial through the northern part of the basin at all. Uh, we do want to point out one more thing, and that is uh, this web app that's available to anyone out there to use at cred.wq.io where people can go in and take a picture to report something that's going on either in ice jamming, levee action, or flood reporting. And just again to show some of the reports that have been going on around the area. Again, just some of the activity that's ramping up with some local breakout flows uh, in and around the rivers. That's on the Rabbit River here just downstream from Campbell. Uh, taken yesterday. Uh, there's on the Mastinka River, you can see there's a bunch of pictures that have been added into there uh, again yesterday and there's flow along there. That's something that we can see that the River Forecast Center can see uh, and, and any of you can look at available on that application. Okay, so if I had to sum this up in a few bullets, I would say that the south end of the Red River Basin, south of Fargo, has done an initial surge of some some water uh, from the far southeast part of the basin. There's still more to come from there. There's still the uh, southeast North Dakota that has to open up on the wild rice. And then from the central and northern part of the basin, all of that is, is still in play. So from that respect, a little bit of water coming out that overall is decreasing the flood risk in the south basin. At this point, then, I thank you all for being on here. We may do this again on Monday. We'll probably have uh, some additional actual flood forecasting up and, 
and moving out on these points here through the weekend and early part of next week.